Hey guys, I want to get back into the ghillie stuff, so I decided to make an adventure vlog in the forest with a ghillie cape. So I'm using my ghillie cape, it's already some years old, I made a video to it. And I will use uniform with the con camo pattern. It's a relatively new camo pattern and the clothing is from UF Pro. But as you can see, at first I need to take my gloves on and I need face paint. And then I will start my adventure. I will stay one night. At the moment we have 13 degrees Celsius. And according to the weather forecast, temperatures can drop to zero degrees Celsius. As you can see, I have my wooden fake rifle with me. Yeah, why a wooden fake rifle? It's easier with the German law, because this is clearly not a weapon, it cannot hurt anyone, and it is not detailed. So it's only a rough, or it's not a good replica. It's only wood and some foam with scope and bipod and camo material on it. So it's easier with the law and I can still take nice sniper photos with this rifle. Yeah, what I will do is I will do some photos and I will test some stuff I have with me. And I decided to make this in English since there was a lot of requests and doing more English stuff and especially ghillie related stuff. So I decided to make this adventure vlog with this, with this ghillie cape and in English. So stay tuned. At first I need to get water. For this I got the coordinates of a, of a small well and I saved it on my watch. And now I'm walking to the coordinates. I have to say there is no tactical scenario included in this action. I'm just sneaking around in the forest with this wooden fake rifle to take some pictures and to do some little adventure. My water filter is a Cutodyne V3 Tactical. It's a small compact filter and so easy to use. Then I have this filter element, screw it on, and then I have drinking water. So it's quite simple. The bottle is made from Hydra Pack, so I bought this 3 liter version of Hydra Pack, and this is compatible to this filter, so I can use this to filter my water. Now I'll only use this 3 liter sack to carry my water, and as soon as I want to drink it, I screw on the filter, and then I can drink it right off, out of this flexible bottle. Okay, now I filled my water so I can continue my walk to a location where I want to go. There I can take nice pictures of this camera pattern and ghillie suit. And it's a really cool area. Yeah, I'm starting to get hungry, so it's time to eat something. I already walked some kilometers and yeah, my backpack is around about 20 kilograms heavy. So it's not that easy to move through the bushes. I don't want to use fire to warm up my meal. So I got myself some 
Forestia. It's almost like from the M MRE with a heater without fire. But I used it the first time, so I'm quite curious how it tastes. Yeah, that's it. Forestia. Vegan green lentil curry. Yeah. Quite curious. Hmm. An advantage of this wet meal is that you can theoretically eat it without heating it up. Because when you have freeze-dried meal it's lighter, but you cannot just eat it. And this can even be heated up without fire. So let's see how it works. So we have this meal and this heater. Of course, this water doesn't have to be filtered. Now it already starts to get hot. You can see there's some steam coming out. Now I'll place this pack inside. Yeah, it's quite hot. I try to mix the pack with the meal inside. So it's all hot. Nice. This is really cool because I don't need fire to heat up this meal. I still have a warm, tasty meal. On the package it says 12 minutes. So let's see. By the way, of course I have a litter bag with me and I will take all my litter back at home. Respect the nature. Okay, now let's see. Okay, it feels, feels warm. Let's open it up. I should have brought my spoon and not my fork. But it tastes quite good, yeah. But I have to say, for a big person like me, warm package is, yeah, it's too small for one meal. I also brought with me this NRG5. It's emergency food. This one is 500 grams. And per 100 grams, it has got 465 kilocalories. So this one is almost 2,500 kilocalories. As you can see, it's, it's really dry, but it has got a lot of calories. Yes, I'm already looking for a place to sleep because I want to sleep in the bushes. Yeah, now you can even see my backpack. It's a Spartan 60 FA from Backhouse. So it has got front assess. My sleeping setup for tonight consists out of this one-man BB tent. It's an observer. So it's a one-man tent made from Gore-Tex. It's relatively heavy, 
but it's also robust. Sleeping bag is from Carinthia. It's a trope, tropen, that means something like tropical. So it's a quite thin sleeping bag with a mosquito net on the opening. Yeah, and my sleeping mat for today is not tactical. It's from Expat, the Sunmat 7. It's thick and uh, gives a good comfort level. I've chosen this because it's quite compact compared to my other uh, sleeping pads I normally use. Okay, now let's build it up. So that's the whole setup. Quite simple. Thin sleeping bag from Carinthia. Inside the observer. Has got ventilation. Yeah, it's out of Gore-Tex, so it's breathable and waterproof. So with this setup, I'm protected from all small animals and from water. My backpack is on the outside, covered with the camouflage netting. And now I will take my camera and I will do some photos of this camo pattern and the girl suit. It's really important to save this position in my watch and remember where I am because when I move around and I don't find back to this position then all my gear is lost and this would be ugly. My watch has got GPS so can choose safe position. There are safe to position. I can even give it a name but I will just use the date and time and now position is saved and I have got it on my watch so I can find back quite easy. When opening bags like this I like to only open them until they are almost open. So I don't have this little piece of trash and I personally prefer that way. Oh, nice. That looks really tasty, in my opinion. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, one tip is I have got the gardener scissors with me and I even have it on an elastic loop so I can fix it on my wrist. I will use this to remove vegetation from the crown. Then I can just let it hang from my wrist. I can attach the vegetation to my suit and then use it again. And it's even nice if you have to stalk and you have to move through thick bushes, you can cut your way through the bushes. That's quite handy. And with my gloves, I also use elastic loops to have them on my wrist. So if I need to take my gloves off to do fine stuff or to filter water or something, I can just let them hang and then I can slip in if I want to have them back again. Sunset just started, so it's getting darker with every minute. And I will look for nice locations for tomorrow. Wow, the light, the light is so amazing right now. So I will move to my camp, get my camera and I will take some pictures because the sun is going down at the moment and the light is so amazing. I will use this for some nice pictures. So back to the camp. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I got some nice shots, I think. The thing is, in the evening, the light situation changes so fast but at the moment it looks quite nice so maybe you can get some more shots over there you can see now it's too dark for the GoPro to continue I made some quite nice photos over there I have got my headlamp inside my leg pocket all the time so as soon as it gets dark, I'm able to take it out. It's a Streamlight Sidewinder. It has got red light on it. Red light is nice because it doesn't blind you. So when you use white light, it's easy to see and you will lose your night vision capability. So it will be flashed and with the red light, it's more unlikely to be flashed. 
so it's nice to use the red light. Now I will prepare myself for the night and then we will see you again tomorrow. Good night! What a beautiful morning. Good morning guys. I slept well. Temperatures at night dropped slightly below freezing. Oh, my sensor says temperatures even dropped down to minus four. <laughs> okay, so the coldest temperature at night was minus four degrees. Sleeping back was okay for tonight. It was not really warm, but it was okay for me personally because the Gore-Tex BV bag gives some extra insulation against the cold. Cool thing about a sleeping bag I want to show you is inside it has got this mosquito net. So with the mosquito net, you can use the sleeping bag alone when it's warm enough. You can place yourself in the bushes and then you can use the mosquito net to protect yourself from mosquitoes or from other small animals. But you have to keep in mind if the mosquito net touches your face, the mosquitoes may can bite you through the net. So you have to have some free space. <laughs> All night. I'm wearing my headlamp around my neck, so when I wake up or when it's still dark and I need light, it's easy to find and I will not lose it. I can just find it and I have light every time I need it as soon as possible. Very important in areas like this and when sleeping outside and moving through areas like this, it's important to check yourself for ticks. So. Ticks are those small animals that suck blood and they can give you sicknesses, illness. Ticks are those small animals that suck your blood and they can infect you with some stuff you don't want to have. <laughs> and it can be really dangerous. So now I'm doing some kind of a short check because now it's bright enough and I have my skin exposed. Important areas are the areas with thin skin. So here, for example, or in this area here. Yeah, this is the like most important areas to check. But I also do an overall check because sometimes they even bite somewhere else. And when I get home, I will do a detailed check and if there is any tech I will remove it. I don't use any sprays at the moment, but sometimes I use sprays. But even if you use sprays, you have to make sure to check yourself, check your body and check every area if there is a tick or if there's no tick. Because those sprays don't give you 100% security. So that's why sometimes I don't really use them against ticks. But when there are a lot of mosquitoes, I like to use sprays because mosquitoes are annoying with sound and biting everywhere and ticks are more like um, they walk around on your body for a long time seeking for the perfect spot and then they bite you and suck your blood. I have my boots inside my BV bag because maybe if it rains then they are protected and they will not be wet. Also, all my clothing is inside the BB bag, so it's some kind of warm. And when the shoes are sweaty in the evening, I take out the inner soles and place them next to my body, so at least the inner soles get dry and then the boot is a bit more dry. At the moment, I'm testing those Salomon X Alp Mountain. They are nice. <laughs> my breakfast is some of this NRG emergency stuff. Yeah. 
that's my breakfast. It has mainly carbohydrates, so the energy gets into the blood quite fast. The plan for today is taking some more pictures and then I will move kind of back. Then there is a small cliff that I want to rappel and then I will go back to my car. And then that's it. Also had my B3 with some water inside BB bag, so at night when I'm thirsty, I can drink. I packed all my stuff. Now there is one of the most important things to look behind. They left nothing. No equipment, no trash. That's important. Okay, looks good. By the way, this is the place where I made my Gilly Suit tutorial video and some other videos. I think it's like eight years ago and this place has changed so much. Those trees have been only one meter tall or two meter tall and now they are, yeah, trees. <laughs> that changed a lot. Interesting to see. It's a completely different environment. Huh. Now I'll continue my way to the cliff where I want to wrap up. Yeah, the environment changes, so now there's much more brown, almost no green. Luckily I know the area up there and there's also almost no green. So I have to get rid of all those bushes I added yesterday. Yeah, and this is exactly why I have green spots and brown spots in my ghillie cape. Because then when I have no vegetation added, it still splits the body into pieces, into green and brown. And when I move to green area, it splits up. And when I move to brown area, it also splits up a bit. Yeah, it's not perfect camouflage, but it splits up the body. And that's also how this con camo pattern works. So. For now, I will change from ghillie suit to only con camo. So yeah, this is the small cliff I talked about and this is where I want to rappel. For rappelling I have this thin rope. It's not rated for climbing, it's made for rappelling only and sadly it's not in tactical colors. But for me that's okay now in this, in this situation. And my harness is in my leg pocket. As you can see, the harness is relatively compact. This is the leg loops and my belt is the belt I'm using the whole time. So it holds up my pants. If I want to repel now, I just have to use my leg loops.
And I'm using a big HMS carabiner, so that means I can do a manta hitch. And with this, I have friction on the carabiner, on the system, and so I don't have to hold my whole weight with one hand. Now I attached my rope with some accessory cord to this tree. I use accessory cord because then I have less friction in the system when retrieving the rope. I can also place the rope directly around the tree, but then I have more friction, but the advantage would be I leave no trace. With this I leave trace because this accessory cord stays behind. Now here's my rope, the manta hitch is quite easy to make. Just have to twist the rope and clip the carabiner to the double, double, double strength. Please don't try this at home. And I also have videos about tactical upsiding on my YouTube channel. And there is an even safer way because now I have no backup knot. With a backpack, a chest harness is even better because now that my center of gravity is quite high and so I could flip upside down over the edge. Nice. I only have to hold with one hand this rope and if I let it go I would just fall and I don't want to fall. The disadvantage of the manta hitch is it twists the rope. You can see here it's twisted. So now I want to retrieve my rope. So I clip one side to the carabiner. This helps me to stop when there is a knot and also a bit to retwist the rope. At first I separate the ends. And then I pull. As you can see, this carabiner removes all the twists. Now I have the knot, I have to open it. Nice. Now I only have to move to the car and to get some cardio I decided to move relatively fast. So it's sporty and I think that's a good end for this adventure vlog. Hope you liked it, feel free to write a comment. And now it's time to go downhill. That's it, I'm back at the car. So that was my adventure. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Bye.